Thank you for, it's recording now. So again, good evening and thank you for joining us at our 2025 Board Election Candidates Town Hall. We've been doing this for quite some time. I think it's very beneficial for to hear from the candidates about what platform or what platforms are and uh, their ideas about how we can make AA Los Angeles a better chapter and a better experience for our members. My name is Carlo Cacavale. I am the executive director for AI Los Angeles. And again, this is a, you know, a chance to, uh, to get to know all of you candidates and uh, find out more about who you are and uh, how you're planning to contribute to the chapter's future. Um, nominees, uh, please be sure to unmute yourself when it's your turn to present. Everybody else, please do the same when we open up for questions. We will hold uh, the Q&A until all nominees have had the chance to speak. So um, if you have questions, put them in the chat and we will call you. Uh, also remind, um, please be reminded that as always, off topic or abusive language will not be tolerated. Anyone who fails to uphold the standards of the quorum will be promptly muted and removed. I love the way you write this line, Steve. This program is being recorded and we will share it on our, on our YouTube channel for everybody to see. We'll actually promote it so everybody who didn't have the chance to be here tonight will still have the chance to hear from you. And now I'm pleased to introduce our Vice President and the 2025 President-elect, Hava Danielson, AIA, Principal um, of uh, DSH Architecture, and our Chapter President, Annette Wu, AIA, who is a Principal in NEC Architecture. And I know you're anxious to get to the candidates, so I'm going to turn things over to Hava and Annette. Um, thank you, Carla. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, we will hear from our nominees and gain insight into the initiatives they aim to bring forward. Um, each candidate will have four minutes to speak, followed by a Q&A session where you'll have a chance to ask questions. For both new and current board leaders, it's an exciting time for the AIA Los Angeles. We've taken up residence at our new Center for Communities in West Adams, a shared workplace and event space with our nonprofit Architecture for Communities Los Angeles. This hub uh, will enhance our efforts to engage and inspire people across Los Angeles. Thanks, Hava. Um, so I'm excited to hear from each one of you and your platforms. Um, it is worth noting that our board members serve either two or three year terms, and that'll be explained more as each uh, role is discussed. Um, this year, we've begun developing our strategic plan for the next three-year cycle, and that means our new officers will influence the direction of AIA LA for several years to come. A reminder that voting is now open at AIALosAngeles.org and will remain open until Tuesday, November 12th at 12 noon Pacific time. You can find the links to the nominees' bios, platforms, and this year's ballot in the chat. And thank you to everyone who has already voted. Your participation truly makes a difference. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, current architect and associate members in good standing of the AI Los Angeles chapter are eligible to vote for all positions, while only associate members are eligible, eligible to vote for associate director. As always, only eligible votes will be counted. So some positions this evening are uncontested, while others have multiple candidates. We encourage everyone to vote for all open positions. Um, and everyone has come tonight to speak because it still matters uh, how you think about these positions you've set yourself up for. Uh, now let's welcome our very first candidate. Uh, I am pleased to... Uh, introduce running for 2025 vice president and 2026 president-elect, we have Tony Lewis, AIA, principal of Lewis Shopeline Architects. Hi, Hava, and thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna kick it off. So uh, running for my uncontested position, but I still have a lot to say. So here we go. Um, so as I said, I'm Tony Lewis. I'm founding principal of Lewis Shepland Architects. Uh, we are a 10-person firm uh, that I run with my partner, Mark Shepline. We're multidisciplinary, and we focus on sustainable community-based projects for institutions, government agencies, nonprofits, and developers. <clears throat> and I feel really lucky to work with a lot 
lot of excellent, smart, engaged colleagues and clients, which I'm sure a lot of you can appreciate. Um, I personally especially love working on projects in the public realm, where I think our projects can have a transformative effect on communities. We've completed over 30 projects for higher education clients, including uh, the University of California and the uh, Los Angeles Community College District, as well as a variety of public spaces for many local municipalities, including the city of Los Angeles and both Los Angeles and Orange Counties. Um, so I've served the last two years as treasurer of AIA LA. And to be honest, I originally jumped into the role with a less than full understanding of how the executive committee functioned. As it turns out, being a part of this board and leadership in particular has been an incredibly rewarding and uh, has been incredibly rewarding. And it's expanded my vision of what the AIA LA offers to a super diverse group of architects and affiliates. We are at different stages of career development and we have so many different areas of interest, but I love how the board absorbs all of that and is able to strategize the best way to capitalize on our talent pool and run with ideas that serve the entire community. As vice president, I'm super excited to work under Hava on advancing the available opportunities presented to our members. As two women who each started their own architecture firms, I think we are both very comfortable with the pursuit of big ideas that, if we are lucky, sometimes actually work out. The incoming executive committee all looks to be a super powerful team. And we have the excitement of working with Carlo, Will, Steve, and all the rest of the staff to really getting the new Center for Communities up and running. Given how things typically go, this endeavor may not exactly be move fast and break things, but maybe something along the lines of move fairly quickly and rearrange stuff. So all good. <laughs> so why am I all in on continuing our work on this board? Put simply, I love Los Angeles. I'm a third generation Angelina. My grandmother graduated from LA High School in 1924. And other than a few hazy years I spent in the Bay Area, I'm a lifelong West Sider. My appreciation for the messiness, beauty, and history of metropolitan Los Angeles is no small part of the reason I became an architect and urban designer. Whether you've been in LA for two years or 50, we can appreciate that the city is currently in flux. We see crises in housing, equity, transportation, and the impacts of climate change. But as architects and urbanists, we also see that there are ways to help. We may not have answers, but we definitely have ideas. And I know I'm preaching to the choir when I say that if there's any group that can and should be weighing in loudly and leading on this, it's our membership. Creative thinkers with the unique background, education, and training to take on big urban scale issues. I'm excited to continue as a member of this board and look forward to doing my part as we continue to make ourselves heard in support of our city and our profession. And lastly, and most importantly, go Dodgers. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Tony. Um, next running for chapter treasurer, um, which is a two year term is John Arnold AIA, a partner at KFA Architecture. Okay, can everyone hear me? Yep. Yes, great. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm not gonna be nearly as poetic as Tony was, but I'll try to do it on the fly. Uh, my name is John Arnold. I am a partner at KFA Architecture in Culver City. Uh, most of our work is in the multifamily mixed use realm, which I love doing because it's uh, like Tony, I love being part of shaping the city, especially on the, uh, in such an essential way as housing. And I love being part of uh, the, the change that uh, LA is, trans uh, the transformation of LA from a suburban to more urban place and, and re-envisioning what that might look like and still keeping the essence of what LA is and everything that Tony said, I agree with the messy beauty uh, of LA. Um, I'm honored to be considered for the position of board treasurer. I've been on the board for the past two years as representative to uh, AIA California. And though I have enjoyed that, I particularly enjoyed being more on the home front, working on our local committees and with our local team, uh, many of whom are on this phone call right now. Um, I've been active on the government outreach committee with HAVA, and that's been really, really fun. Um, and working with uh, Carlos, who has, isn't on this call, but he'll be 
continuing next year. And I look forward to continuing on that uh, committee going forward. Uh, in the last year, we uh, have grown up a little bit in the financial department uh, because we have a lot more obligations because of the new headquarters. And so I've been on a task force with Tony and um, Nathan and several others uh, to really look at our finances, how we get income, what we spend it on, because now we're in a bigger league that we have a big responsibility with our own space. So we've been really looking at that, looking at projections, the way we, how we run the business, like we run our own businesses. And so that has been really rewarding. And I want to continue that work and getting uh, AIA LA on uh, its, its trajectory to be managing the new space and also just managing finances uh, differently uh, than we have had needed to in the past. Um, what else do I have? I just kind of went off menu here. Uh, really looking forward to being in the new space. I live in West Adams, so I can walk there, which is great. I know all the good bars to go to after meetings. And um, I think, oh, and lastly, uh, the last two years has gone by really, really fast. And by the time you're two years in, you realize like, wow, my term is almost up and you're just starting to learn how the ecosystem of the board works and how everything, how you get things done and how you're effective and how your voice, how you use your voice. So I'm really eager to spend another two years on the board to continue that momentum. And I would love to be the pressure treasurer. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, John. And uh, your knowledge of the neighborhood and the neighborhood bars is not why we asked you to run for treasurer. Um, but it is going to help. <laughs> um, next, we will present the candidate. I am very happy to present the candidate for ex officio associate director, who will also serve as vice chair for the Emerging Professionals Committee. Um, uh, Catherine and I go way back. She was a student of mine years ago at Otis. Um, so this is very uh, heartwarming. Uh, please welcome Catherine Hernandez, Associate AIA, uh, NOMA, uh, and you've got the floor. Thank you, everyone, and um, thank you, Shahala. I'm also equally as excited. Uh, my name is Catherine Hernandez. I am calling in from unceded Tonga land. And a little bit about myself. I uh, born and raised in South Central LA. Um, I'm a first generation as well. Um, my interest in architecture, urban design, and the built environment really came from uh, living in my community and receding um, there for most and all of my life. Um, you know, I think experiencing the 1992 civil unrest and seeing the disinvestment, particularly in South LA, made me question a lot of the policy behind the built environment. And I didn't understand what architecture was at the time, but I did know that I wanted to see change in my community. Um, through becoming involved in multiple nonprofit sectors um, as a youth and then as a student and then as a young adult, um, I really began, uh, became interested in just uh, urban planning, right? Uh, the choices that were made in our community, making data collection to compare in particular uh, Council District 8 in comparison with other districts in LA City and, and then the county overall and looking at disparities that exist in the, uh, between food systems, um, redlining and, and other items among that. Um, in pursuing architecture, then I became really interested in service enhanced building and community engagement. So I started actually very at a very early stage in my career um, through nonprofits, really do, being the community liaison and doing a lot of community design. Um, I have a range of, or I would say a very diverse background and experience. I've worked in studios that do very high-end commercial and high-end residential homes. And after doing that for quite some time, I actually uh, transitioned over to now, to now where I've currently been for the last uh, five years, where I um, lead capital investments, not only in LA County, but in Southern California with a nonprofit development and architecture studio where we create service enhanced 
permanent supportive housing, transitional low-income housing, and socially beneficial community facilities. Um, most recently, I completed in partnership with LA County, um, a five building campus, which is first of its kind in South LA. Um, and it's a walk-in facility that provides individuals with medical, mental health care, and a safe sleeping environment as an alternative to incarceration. This is something that I am personally very invested in um, as I've seen just um, injustices within systems, not only in my neighborhood, but throughout the city and also throughout the country. And being able to offer my technical skills outside of the A to Z architecture studio to really impact and transform people's lives. Um, now, my interest for, in particular for this position um, comes from a range of things and combined, which um, I have, I'm really excited about. I've previously actually been part of NCARB's uh, think tank which was a two-year uh, think tank where a lot of emerging leaders across the country are selected to provide feedback to NCARB in changes and maybe uh, transitions that uh, suggestions and um, a, a feedback in challenges that we see currently for test takers or for people who are accumulating their hours through AXP um, and also served as a NOMA board member uh, for four years. And I specifically worked in the DEI committee and also with the emerging leaders uh, committee and group. Um, what I, my intentions are here, I think most of my involvement with AIA has been through ACLA actually, um, which has been very exciting and also a new space for me. Um, in entering this position, I am interested in learning what has worked and what uh, kind of changes folks would like to see. Um, specifically for emerging leaders. I know that not everybody follows a very um, synonymous path, right? Um, not everybody would like to become a licensed architect. So I'm also interested in hearing how can AIA uh, emerging leaders committee serve those folks who are interested in maybe adjacent paths with their technical skills, but also connecting them to other networks outside of AIA, um, maybe through NOMA or through other uh, adjacent sectors that serve our community and are currently also helping supporting communities to grow their built environment. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Loved hearing about your diverse background and you could bring a lot of different perspective to the board. Um, so moving on to the Office of AIA California Representative, we have two candidates running for one open position that serves for two years. Uh, first up, we have Ismar Enriquez, AIA, LFA, Lead AP, Design Lead, and Project Manager at Practice. Hi, good evening. Thank you all for uh, coming together um, to all of our guests um, for making the time to listen to this very special conversation. Um, my name is Ismar, <laughs> and it's mentioned and I've had the privilege to work with AI Los Angeles for quite some while. Ever since I started my, my career almost two decades ago, it's given me the opportunity to showcase my student work, to be part of committees uh, that showcase and empower students, also the environment. And now I've had the privilege to sit among all these amazing people for the last three years as a board member. And as a dedicated leader within AILA, my mission aligns with the AILA's core values. Uh, the amazing experience that I've had running with the um, Strategic Plan Task Force, um, it has given me really, really the root of what our mission is. And in that mission, I like to ensure that we have value, relevance, inspiration, inclusivity, and advocacy for every member in the community we serve. For value, I'd like to deliver essential resources to all of our members and practices, supporting career growth and architectural excellence. On the relevance, relevancy, addressing the critical issues that matter today, climate change, affordable housing, equity, and sustainable practices. Inspiration, elevating uh, design excellence and showcasing the transformative power of architecture in shaping our communities. Inclusivity, bringing diverse voices to the table, ensuring everyone from small to large firms have an opportunity to contribute. And lastly, advocacy. I pledge to be a strong, consistent voice from City Hall to Sacramento, continuing my work advocating for policy changes in housing, climate action, equitable design. 
I spent the last years leading efforts on AI California advocacy and climate education committees and working in the residency and design and policy initiatives. My experience and my vision um, in serving in leadership roles, such as the chair of the Committee of the Environment and the two by eight student expert competition, and as an AI LA board member, I've gained invaluable insights in, into our profession. My goal as an AI California representative is to champion key issues that shape architecture statewide and beyond. Through my work on policy, climate advocacy, and education, I'll continue to drive real tangible progress for our profession and for our chapter. Education, equity, climate, housing, practice will be my focus areas. I will work to bridge the gap between all levels of firms, all levels of individuals, ensuring that every voice in our LA community is heard. We, we will not only support our members, but also ensure that architecture in California continues to lead the way and design innovation and sustainability. But uh, one of the things that I really love about our chapter is the ability to roll up our sleeves and do the real work. Um, and I apologize to everybody on the call, but I have to leave in a couple of minutes because I am going to share my California Supplemental Exam experience with AI California and this a study hub group. And on Wednesday, I have another climate action webinar that I'll be moderating on circular economy and harvesting the end of life opportunities. Those are the real reasons why I'm here, is to make sure that we do the work. We just don't talk to talk, but we walk to walk. And I second you, Tony. Go Dodgers. Thank you. Thank you, Smart. Uh, very moving. Um, next, uh, we'll hear from Stephen Phillips, FAIA, principal of Stephen Phillips Architects, um, also running for the contested seat for the AIA California representative. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to thank the LA AIA, including Steve Tanner and the present board and administration for organizing this online event. And for those of you who are taking the time to engage in the political life of voting. Also, thank you, Ismar, and the other candidates for all you do for our chapter. Uh, those efforts are also very much appreciated and really amazing. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Stephen Phillips, FAIA, PhD, I'm a professor and director of the Cal Poly Los Angeles Metropolitan Program in Architecture and Urban Design and principal of Sparks in downtown LA. As an architect, I have over 30 years experience practicing, teaching, writing, and curating architecture that supports public adv advocacy here in Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, and the Central Coast. Besides the numerous boards and committees that I have participated, I'm known here locally in Los Angeles for my many years of sustained public outreach, resourcefulness, and fundraising initiatives that have created over 150 plus events on architecture in Los Angeles at the Helms Design Center, A plus D Museum, Mac Museum, LACMA, Hennessy plus Ingalls, the Getty, Emerson College, and the LA AIA on a wide range of themes, particularly public policy, equity and diversity, sustainability, housing, and climate change and contemporary practice. These lectures, exhibitions, and events that I've initiated, organized, and moderated with incredible local support have each ranged in size up to 500 plus people and have included most recently the Housing LASF Building Matters Symposium at Emerson College, the Low Rise, Mid Rise, High Rise Exhibition and Symposium at the Helms Design Center, and the Building Equity, Space, Place, and Race Online Symposium with NOMA, uh, that many of you may have attended. In addition, I've organized and presented several large events locally on collaborations surrounding my published writings and books on environmental design and Los Angeles architecture history uh, with MIT and the Getty Research Institute, including my earlier work on the LA-10. I've also made a point to give not only our established architects, but young architects an opportunity to launch and develop their work and ideas within these venues. These public events are, of course, only a small amount of what I do as a professional architect who has run offices and built projects throughout the state. 
San Francisco, San Diego, LA, and the Central Coast on a wide range of building types from schools and libraries to wineries, restaurants, houses. Most recently, my awarded interest in multi-use, multi-income, multi-family housing, which I'm most proud of. Like all of you, architecture as a civic-minded community effort is extremely important to me. And in the course of my advocacy, I've proven extremely resourceful, cited and awarded by the National AIA and the ACSA for my local outreach and fundraising efforts of well over $500,000 garnered to support these events, publications, and the many student scholarships, threats, fellowships, and internships created. I'm extremely grateful for the many foundations, architects, consultants, developers, contractors, and community organizations that have had the opportunity to work with, who have lent their support to these efforts, which have made such a great difference in the lives of thousands of young architects. Too many firms to list here. I'm extremely humbled by all the support my organizational efforts have received over these many years. And I'm here today sincerely hoping to channel some of that indefatigable, proactive, optimistic, entrepreneurial skill set to support the LA AIA at the local and state level. I'd like to see the AIA become a highly fiscally responsible institution that is working to reach and support the many architects it already does and the many architects it still does not. The AIA provides important information, knowledge, and governance. It advocates for changes in building code and policy that impacts building performance, feasibility, opportunity, education, and community growth. I am grateful to all the many events that it hosts that brings us together and helps others outside our immediate industry see who we are and how we impart a greater service to the building industry, society, and human culture. I'm also really interested in working with the AIA to streamline our administrative structure and knowledge-based platforms to reduce expenditures while creating new and diverse online platforms for greater outreach. I really do hope you'll vote to give me that opportunity to work with the LA AIA our board and the state on behalf of our greater good. Thanks. Thanks Stephen for sharing the important work you do and your vision for working on the board. Um, so now we'll hear from six candidates running this year for the three available director positions. Uh, we'll begin with Sarveen Ashkan, AIA vice president and market sector leader for healthcare at Leo A. Daily. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Sarvin Ashkan, healthcare practice leader at Leo Daily, Los Angeles office, working with various healthcare facilities in Los Angeles. I moved from the Bay Area to Los Angeles about 40 years ago, 40 years ago, to go to graduate school, thinking that I would always go back to the Bay Area once I'm done with my school. Instead, I fell in love with LA and started my life here in Los Angeles. I've been working and living here for the past four years. As an AIA LA director, my first initiative would be to establish equity among small business architectural firms in our community. As a small business woman-owned architect, having my own healthcare um, design practice for many years, I always wanted to be an active member in our AIA LA chapter, but didn't have the opportunity to spend on the membership fees that are geared towards corporate firms. Being advocate of equity, I will collaborate with National AIA to lower the AIA membership fees for emerging licensing, licensed professionals with small startup architectural firms so that they could have the opportunity to become AIA members and be engaged in our AIA LA chapter providing them the opportunity to be connected with critical business contacts, developers, and clients, which would help them to remain sustainable and competitive in business. My second initiative that I would like to bring forward during my three-year term is LA Beautification Initiative. Our Angelina knows deserve better city planning with abandoned parks, safe open outdoor spaces, enhancing the health and lifestyle of our current and future residents. Let's not do this just for the upcoming 2028 Olympics and call the day. Let's do this for us and uh, our future residents. As you all know, some of the problems we have we are facing right now in our city are people experiencing homelessness, 
Our parks are not equitably distributed among various communities, and many com communities do not have access to parks within a reasonable distance. There are large-scale mixed-use development that are being permitted and built along major boulevards that are architecturally an eyesore to our communities. To resolve these issues, I will take three major actions. On the AIA legislative side, in collaboration with our AIA leaders, I will be lobbying with our govern governmental city, county, and other community stakeholders to approve more funding for building facilities that support mental health through design and continuum care for the homeless people, healing them by advancing the mental health treatments in our community and getting them back into the society so that they can start a new life. The second action under this initiative is advancing health and wellness design in our communities by collaborating with city planning department in drafting a referendum that would increase the developer's fees per square feet, which would go towards building small neighborhood parks and safe biking, walking, and jogging trails across all communities, not just planting a few trees in front of their new construction and calling the day. And last but not least, starting an initiative to create a more robust urban design review committee established within the planning department for approving the design of large scale commercial mixed use development projects in our city, making sure that developers are hiring local architects to design buildings that are environmentally sustainable while being aesthetically pleasing and not an eyesore to our communities. These initiatives will stimulate work for architects in our community, protect our environment, and advance our, our core values. Together, we could create a roadmap for the future of our Angelinos. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarveen. Uh, also running for director, please welcome Nicole Cannon, AIA, founder of NCA Studio. Thank you for the introduction. And also just thank you to everybody who attended the town hall tonight. I really appreciate the time, uh, you know, everybody taking out of their day to, to listen to all of the amazing people we have here tonight. Um, but anyway, so my name is Nicole Cannon and I'm the principal and founder of NCA Studio. Uh, we're a small seven person office down in the arts district that focuses on designing spaces that bring people together and fosters community connections. Um, you may also know me from some of my, my uh, past work with the AIA. Uh, I was a, a former chair on the committee environment. I'm also very active in various groups and events across Los Angeles. Um, so a little over 25 years ago, I actually graduated uh, college, in, college from the University of Texas in Austin and packed up my car and moved to LA. Um, and honestly, I, I've, I've been here ever since. Uh, it's been a, an amazing place to live. And I really, I, it's, it's where I plan to stay. I have my family here and I really want to invest in the, the local community. Um, out of those 25 years, I've actually owned my own business for 13 years. And during that time, I've really navigated the challenges of a small business owner, really giving me, a, a, I think, a, a very full understanding of the issues faced by architects in our community. You know, whether we're balancing the complexities of uh, trying to be creative with uh, financial stability, navigating all the regulations or staying ahead of the industry shifts, I've, I've experienced these things all firsthand as an employee, as an owner, as a mentor, and as, as a, a member of our community. Um, so then as a board director, I really do plan on bringing practical knowledge to support our community in overcoming these challenges. I believe my experience and challenges are similar to many members of the community, whether you're part of a small or large office. Uh, we all share the same pressures, the economic realities of running a small firm to the responsibilities of leading projects that make a positive impact in our, in our city. Uh, beyond business, I'm also just passionate about sustainability, inclusivity and in design and leadership in our community. I think for me, it really started uh, when I started my own company and was able to see that I could have an impact uh, that led to becoming a, a, a chair on the committee and environment. And just that's where I also started advocating and educating the public for sustainable practices, um, uh, continuing that into my office and into the community so that we could build healthier and more resilient communities. My work has always centered on creating spaces that people can enjoy and that elevate their quality of life. 
I believe collaboration is key in this work. Uh, you know, I've really, over the years, I've learned to listen and really uh, learned the importance of bringing together people together, whether that's with a design team, a client, or within the larger architectural community. I believe communication is the heart of effective leadership, and I'm committed to fostering an environment where diverse voices are heard, ideas are exchanged, and we can all grow as professionals. Uh, I believe Los Angeles is truly a unique place. It's full of creative energy, diversity, and Los Angeles and our work in Los Angeles has the potential to, sh to shape the future of design. Um, I wanna be part of driving positive change in, in our community, supporting excellence in our, in our profession and ensuring that the AI LA is a place that architects can thrive. I think we can all agree that we want LA to be a more sustainable, inclusive and connected place. Um, so just finally, I wanted to say thank you. I'm really excited about this opportunity and also just the opportunity to work uh, with, the, with the, the board and with the community on issues that matter to us most. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Nicole, and proud to see you throw your hat in the ring. I've known Nicole for over 20 years. Um, our next nominee for director is Lauren Cole. AIA and Associate Principal with Co-Architects. Thank you, Annette, and uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Coles, and I'm really honored to be running for the director of the AIA board. I come with 20 years of experience as an architect, mentor, and leader, and 18 of those are right here in Los Angeles and nine at Co-Architects. You know, my work has been with institutional clients that has spanned um, health science, education buildings, lab facilities, and uh, student unions, as well as healthcare. You know, but throughout my project or my career, I've really focused uh, more than just designing buildings. I've concentrated on building bridges, fostering collaboration, and creating outcomes that benefit communities. You know, our profession is standing at a, I feel that our profession is really standing at a pivotal moment right now um, with the rapid advancements in technology, evolving design delivery methods, and the pressing need to meet sustainability goals. You know, us architects are really challenged to continually adapt, um, but this isn't really anything that we can do in isolation. And I feel that the future of our profession really lies in teamwork, not only with architects, but across industries. I think it's time for us to forge you know, stronger relationships with industry leaders, trades, local representatives, and all the stakeholders who help shape the built environment, our membership. <laughs> so we really must come together to deliver the best solutions for the communities that we, that we serve. And over the past few years, I've been active in three AIA Los Angeles committees, uh, professional practice, technology in practice, and women in architecture. Um, I was the chair of the practice our professional practice committee, and I've had the privilege of organizing and co-leading more than 12 events, uh, some in partnership with the AIA, LA, JEDI, and emerging uh, professional committees, as well as with the DBIA and other city officials. And in response to the rapid pace of digital transformation, I helped conceive of the very first AIA LA technology conference. And this event has now been in its fourth year and it's really become a key platform for bringing together design management and technology professionals to address the future um, of our field. I've also had the opportunity to support the Women in Architecture Powerful conferences by securing sponsorships, raising donations, and um, creating breakout sessions for event speakers. So these experiences have really reinforced uh, my belief in the power of collaboration and the vital role of open cross-disciplinary dialogue uh, in, in shaping the future of architecture. So beyond the office, and I guess my AIA commitments, I'm um, really have also been committed to advancing equity and inclusivity in our profession. I've been a mentor at the USC Guild Mentorship Program, the HBCU Professional Development Program, and um, through my involvement at the ACLA Designed by Diversity, I've really kind of made it a, a mission to help elevate the next generation of architects. I've also spearheaded co-architects in office, AXP, licensure program, which has helped over 30 staff members earn their architectural licenses through mentorship and resources um, over the past 10 years. 
or nine years to be specific. <laughs> um, and I believe that, you know, mentorship is really one of the most powerful ways that we can shape the future of our profession. And by sharing knowledge, amplifying emerging voices, and fostering a more diverse and inclusive pipeline of talent, we can really create an architecture community that reflects the people um, that we serve. So I'm running for the AIA LA board, something I never, ever thought I would do, <laughs> because I believe that we can do more to, to bridge the gap between architects and, and the broader community. You know, as architects, we really hold a professional responsibility to create better outcomes. And I'm really, I'm committed to making that happen through fostering a culture of collaboration. So hopefully with your support, um, I'm confident that together we can elevate architecture in Los Angeles to new heights, driving forward innovation, equity, and a deeper connection to the communities that we serve. So thank you for your time. Um, thank you, Lauren. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Craig Hamilton, FAIA, a principal at Canon Design, again, also running for director. Good evening, and thank you. Um, this has been enjoyable. I really feel it's an honor to be included in this group, um, to be considered for, for a position on the board. Um, in some ways, I think I'm a newbie to, to California. I've been here 30 years in Los Angeles, and um, I share Tony's excitement for um, what it is and what it can be, and I wouldn't want to live or practice uh, really anywhere else. Um, at Canon Design, where I've been um, for the past 25 years, I've worked in our higher and led our higher education practice. Um, and I've also spent a lot of time, particularly in Santa Monica, working with community groups. Um, I've been, a, for the past 10 years, a member of the Santa Monica Architectural Review Board. And in all of that work, in our educational work and the work in the community, um, I've realized how important it is to bring people together and to be able to listen to voices and to forge a kind of common vision and direction and how challenging that can be. So as, as I've um, thought about this and the opportunity, um, I really would like to have two parts to what, I, what I'm talking about and would be a board platform. One of them is kind of internal. Um, to build on the strategic plan, to really work that, uh, to see that we have a sustainable foundation and a, and a path forward. Um, we have a new building. It's, it's wonderful as an opportunity, but to create the kind of financial stability that allows the AIA to go, AIA LA to move forward in a positive direction. And having a place-based forum, finally, where we can have conversations about the future of LA. And I think particularly the issues of, of the day of housing equity and how we can participate in being an example and, and a, showing a way to a sustainable and equitable future. I think in that optimism and other people have mentioned the same thing, I think there um, there's an opportunity to broaden that base uh, for the past 10 years, I've been on the, the fellows mentoring committee in the AIA. And one of the things that we've realized, and I don't think yet do uh, a sufficient job with, is um, engaging with our younger emerging professionals to help them find a home and find a path and grow and flourish in their careers. And I think we could do more of that. I also would like to see us broaden, uh, and other people have mentioned this, broaden who we engage with. There's a larger design community, including interior designers, landscape architects, graphic designers, product designers, you know, even people doing virtual environment that all care about our community um, writ large and making it better. And the degree to which we can provide leadership and embrace those collaborations. And with not to mention those, but also our builder partners, our consulting engineers, all of the people we work with who I think share um, the goal to make um, Los Angeles and, and California and the country a better place through design and, and, and doing so equitably. I think there's a real opportunity to, um, in a focused way, broaden that reach, which can help 
um, increase our relevance and increase our our um, stability and and base moving forward. So thank you again for the the opportunity uh, to present these ideas and uh, and be considered for a spot on the board. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Craig, for sharing your ideas. Um, and our next nominee is Brian Lane. FAIA, a principal at Koning Eisenberg Architecture. Thanks, Annette. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, it's good to see you. To a lot of familiar faces and some others that I can't wait to meet. Um, this is my second presentation today with no slides, so uh, it's not where I usually like to be, but <laughs> I'll try not to weave on you. Um, I'm, I'm Brian Lane. I'm a principal at Koning Eisenberg where I've had a few roles, starting as a young graduate architect and then as a director of operations and, and now as a partner. But all the while, I've focused on housing. Early on, I worked on projects in Skid Row and naively thought that we'd have housing solved in a couple of years, not quite. But what that experience lit under me was the idea that architecture had something to contribute to underserved populations and neighborhoods. Um, equity wasn't buzzing in schools then, but I was lucky in my early years in LA to align myself with some mentors, city agencies, nonprofit developers, and projects that had a chance to make a difference for people and communities. Um, that's my foundation and has kind of guided me for, for quite a while. Um, so in that light, what I'd like to bring to the board of directors is the formation of a housing committee a think tank focused on design, policy, and production issues, a place where we can share issues and support each other, and where we can provide ideas and the leadership to affect change in the housing realm. Um, separate but, but related, um, the, the affordable housing industry in particular has a lot of embedded knowledge. I think John Arnold would agree with that. Um, I'd like to open that up and find ways to mentor the next generation of advocates towards housing for all. We have a big, um, road ahead of us. Um, during the previous mayoral election, I tweaked a ranty email that Will Wright saw and turned it into something more positive called Dear Mayor, 10 Issues and 10 Fixes for Affordable Housing Production. That was thanks to the encouragement of LAAIA and the Government Outreach Committee. Um, a sequel may be in the works. Um, but this year, I was a member of the AIA California Housing Steering Committee where we commented on legislation and created a five-point housing position document that addresses things like adaptive reuse, condo liability, residential codes, commercial prevailing wage impacts. And that window into the state chapter was encouraging, and I hope to bring some of the continuity and connection um, of those resources to the local membership. Um, I like hearing what AA members are doing and experiencing. Um, the successes and the frustrating stuff. I mean, we all have it, right? Um, sometimes it's therapy among colleagues. Other times it's a chance to start a conversation that would benefit us in our work with public agencies and building partners. And I hope I can represent members on things that impact us big and small. Uh, one short example is recently uh, several architects commented on the planning department, how they changed an inter interpretation of an age old uh, open space ordinance requirement and not in a good way. It was starting to cause problems for people trying to move housing through the system. So quickly, together with Will Wright and a local land use con consultant, we clarified the issues and got a memo together that explained what members were experiencing and argued there was no reason for the new, more onerous interpretation. Um, I think it was effective, and it's that kind of awareness I'd like to be part of with the ability to leverage AA, LA's reach um, to bring things to light, react quickly uh, when needed. Finally, I'm sensitive to things that impact our efficiency. I think I've heard this from some other people. And our ability to actually make a fair wage for the value we bring. Um, so whether it's poorly crafted public RFPs, navigating bloated process, or increasing insurance issues, I'm looking for ways to be part of a discussion that can help our membership be innovative, successful in all aspects, and sustainable for the long haul. Um, it's an honor to be considered for this position. Uh, AA LA has one of the best and most supportive chapters in the US. The chance to work with Carlo, Will, and Steve, and a great board, and the group of dedicated members here tonight would be a pleasure. So thanks, everybody. I would say go Dodgers, but I think I'm going to say I love Griffith Park and P22, I miss them. <laughs>
Thank you, guys. Um, thank you, Brian. Uh, all your comments are appreciated. Um, and, uh, and yes, we we appreciate your, your uh, collaboration over the years. Um, I am honored to welcome the next speaker, Martin Ramirez Jr. with Gannett Fleming, uh, AIA, NOMA, and a vice president at Gannett Fleming. Take it away. Thank you, uh, thank you Ava. Um, and thank you to all the uh, board, current board members for AIA, AIA LA. Um, you're truly an inspiration. Um, you're doing a great job. It inspires me to run for a, a position as director. Um, and it's all due to the great work uh, that you're currently doing. So thank, thank you all uh, for the great work that you're doing. Uh, I've I am a graduate from uh, Arizona State University, but you know, lived in downtown LA for the last 10 years. Uh, been heavily involved in many of the things that um, the AIA LA has been doing um, when it comes to housing. Um, it's the original reason that I got into architecture was because I was very interested in social equity, in housing, um, and being able to be involved uh, with AIA LA has allowed me to enter through the doors and, and, and begin to have uh, those types of discussions. Um, as one of the things that I've done recently um, through my relationship and being an alumni with ASU, been able to actually teach for ASU and actually bring uh, a, a studio down to Los Angeles and begin to form relationships with local architects who have done tremendous feats, uh, you know, such as Michael Maltz and Michael Lair, and be able to create um, some, some interesting um, partnerships. One of the things that, um, that I'm also doing is I'm also currently involved still with ASU's uh, Herald Examiner building. ASU is in development of creating an architecture program and I'm part of a small committee that is helping ASU create um, relationships and networking with a lot of the um, people or a lot of the city leaders uh, within uh, Los Angeles. And as director, that's the exact thing I want to do with this organization is I want to be able to leverage those relationships with the city of Los Angeles and a lot of the uh, big players like uh, LAWA, uh, LA Metro, a lot of the agencies that are making a big impact uh, in the economy, in housing, um, and, uh, and obviously um, that have influence in, 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 in people, experience, uh, people experiencing homelessness. So with that, I want to say that for the past two years, um, I, or Gannon Fleming and myself, have been the sponsor for the City Leaders Breakfast in collaboration with the AA Los Angeles. And it's been, in my mind, a very a success story for the last two years since it's been back since, um, since COVID. And this platform has been around much, much longer. And again, to the great work to AIA Los Angeles. But I'd like to draw from those experiences, those um, those people that we that we bring in that um, have heavy influence, not only in how we begin to shape and form the city, but also how we begin as architects to be able to plan and do our job. Um, you know, I can relate directly to what Brian was saying earlier and how do we improve that process. And having this forum where we're directly uh, having this opportunity to have these roundtable discussions helps us um, very much. And all I want to do is be able to real, uh, leverage those relationships and take it to the next step. Um, that would be what I would want to do is to be able to look at the existing community, such as the urban design community, and, and very open to new committees, but to see how any of these features, whether it's urban infrastructure or housing, and how we can uh, improve on those, uh, those uh, committees. Um, related to that, I'm very interested in the strategic plan and its new cycle. And I'm hoping that a lot of these ideas begin to influence how um, the strategic plan begins to evolve. Uh, because one of the most important things I think is 
how the strategic plan really relates to the city of Los Angeles and its growth. Uh, we've heard, you know, the Olympics, we've heard about housing. Having that direct synergy is very important on how we develop that strategic plan. Um, and, you know, you know I, not only do I want to be a part of it, but also want to draw on those experiences and make sure that we're really making those connections. And lastly, I want to be able to uh, help influence that local community. I love the new space that um, the AIA is in on West Adams. Um, you know, I love the stuff that Carlo is doing uh, to be able to bring in that community. Um, also with ACLA being right there and how that could, could grow. Um, I see many, many opportunities and I'd love to be able to draw on that and, and, and see how we can, can make it grow. Again, AIA Los Angeles, you're already doing a fantastic job and, and I commend you for the hard work that you're doing. Um, I feel like uh, a lot of the ideas and aspirations that I'm bringing to the table are going to help improve and be a catalyst for 2025 and ongoing. So with that, I, again, I really thank everyone and I, I hope that I, I gain a vote or two from, from today's discussion um, and appreciate the time and very honored to be considered for director amongst very well-qualified colleagues and very impressed with, with everyone's platform and also bio. So thank you. Thank you again. Um, so it's my job here to thank everybody. And I really um, can't thank you all enough for throwing your hat in the ring, for being willing to dedicate yourself to the board of the AIA Los Angeles. Um, uh, it isn't for the faint of heart. And um, uh, it, it really, you know, we, we have so much talent in this city. Uh, it's reflected in all of our committee volunteers and all of you who've stepped forward uh, and are interested and willing to, to serve on the board. Um, now that you've heard from all the candidates, we, this moment, we want to open the floor, uh, for your questions. You can direct your question to a specific candidate or pose a general question for multiple on nominees to answer. Um, and we're asking people to, uh, raise their hands or, or to type a question in the chat. Um, so. Please keep your questions to a minute or less, uh, and and thank you. Do I see any hands? I don't know if it's me or Steve who would actually uh, manage the questions, but uh, I'm watching the chat and the hands as well. Okay. I mean, I will say that another value of doing this this evening is this is going to be recorded and put online. So people in the privacy of their own, uh, their own homes, their own email rooms uh, will be listening to this and it will help them decide on uh, uh, how to cast their balance. Um, there's a question, Steve, about uh, associate members. Of course. Um, Eve asked, do we get to vote for the associate member or is that only for associates to vote for? Um, currently only associates are able to vote for the associate director position. Um, architects may vote for all of the other positions and associates may vote for all the positions. Um, so that is currently how it's set up. Um, yeah. And just to clarify, um, the associate position is uncontested, am I right? Yes, we, we, we ask people to continue to vote for all the positions just so we can kind of see who's out there and yep. are they listening? <laughs> so, um, but yes, that's correct. So we're rallying associates to vote for associates. Yes. I think people spoke very well tonight and I and I and I do want to thank everybody for being thoughtful. 
in how you present it, your ideas and, and how you might engage with another board. Do candidates maybe have questions for each other? Not that we want to challenge anybody, but maybe, you know. Uh, Good idea. Ask for clarifications, you know, regards to what each platform is. Okay, this was not, since this is not... Um, a debate, basically, but just a presentation. Good try, Carlo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to move the conversation uh, forward, but no, it's a good one. Yeah. Um, I would also like to invite you all to uh, to get your colleagues uh, to vote. It's very, very important that we actually show a good, you know, a good voting. Uh, whether they vote for you or vote for somebody else, please, you know, just let them know that the election process is open. It's we are a little microcosm of what's up out there, right? If we don't participate in the life of our profession, how can we expect anybody else to support us, uh, you know, in this profession? So uh, let's spread the word that you know there's a board that needs to be formed. You guys are fantastic candidates. Yeah. We'd be honored to work to work with uh, uh, any of you. Unfortunately, for some positions, it will not be possible. So I would also encourage <clears throat> those of you who will not make the final cut to still be involved, remain involved with the AA Los Angeles. There are many opportunities to lead the conversations. We have 14 very active committees that really, as Lauren mentioned before, or Nicole, or um, other of you who uh, have been you know, part of these committees, they do great work and they move the uh, conversation forward and they really achieve a lot. So uh, the work is not done only at the board level. It's not just about the level of leadership, but it's done at many different levels. Brian, you know, because you've been in so many committees that, you know, and, um, and uh, as Catherine also mentioned, we have a new brand new organization called Architecture for Communities Los Angeles. Uh, with the uh, intent of really communicating with the communities at a larger scale, outside of the profession sometimes, but still through the lens of the profession. So that's another wonderful opportunity to get involved because ACLA is part of AA Los Angeles anyway, and we're going to be under the same roof in this new space. So um, please be the ambassadors of your organization at all the level in which your organization operates right now. And if we really don't have any questions or anything else to say, I would like very happily give you back 20 minutes of your life because... Time is really precious these days. Um, Carlo, I'm just going to reiterate what you just said, uh, that the, the nuts and bolts hard work often is done at the level of the committees. You know, yeah. a lot of things that we discussed this evening are going to happen in um, uh, the, the Government Outreach Committee, making a plug, but um, uh, a lot of other committees that uh, Committee on the Environment, um, Women in Architecture, a lot of the, the efforts that people discuss tonight, uh, there's tremendous good work being done in the committees. So I'm just making that plug for all the people who are going to listen to this recording. Um, <laughs> please get involved. Uh, uh, we stand and fall uh, on our volunteers and we do such amazing work. So thank you. I want to just add on to what everybody, Carlo Hava has said already. Um, thank you all to all of our candidates for being here tonight and sharing your thoughts and your vision for working on the board and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic. Have a Bye. wonderful evening. Thank you, everybody. Have Thank a good night. You. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.